Hey guys, happy Saturday. Thank you for being here with me today. Whether you are catching this live or whether you are catching it on the replay, say hi, let me know that you're here and uh, thanks for hanging out with me. So I'm Katie, I'm a holistic health coach and a long distance hiker, if you're new to this group. And my work, my passion is about helping adventurers to optimize their health spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally, all of it, holistically, so that we can get into the outdoors more. It's been, time in the outdoors is one of the most transformative things in my life and uh, I wanna share it with everyone. So that is why I do the work that I do. So today I want to talk about navigating stress uh, and staying healthy during the holidays because our health is, as I was just saying, physical, mental, and spiritual, and emotional. It's holistic, which is what this group is all about. And I know that many of you are preparing for a big hike next year, whether it's the AT or the PCT or something else, or maybe you're just wanting to stay healthy in general. And that includes stress management. It's one of like the four pillars that I'm always talking about, which is nourishment, movement, sleep, and stress management. Um, so that means optimizing your health in the off season if you have a big adventure coming up in 2021 and beyond. Um, and so, as I was just saying, that includes stress management because it's um, it's really hard to have optimal health and to perform optimally even on trail when you have a lot of stress hormones in, in your body. So, uh, say hi as you're popping on. Feel free to drop questions as we go. Again, even if you're watching the replay, I'll come back and respond to them. Um, and of course, none of this information will be helpful if you do not implement it. So I invite you to grab a pen and paper. We're just gonna go through three steps. Um, so take some notes and then you can refer back to it if you need some support beyond uh, this training. So of course, as we all know, the holidays can not only be an amazing time, but um, also a stressful and a challenging time. And it can be a really triggering time for a lot of people. Um, things like loneliness, overwhelm, anxiety, um, other uncomfortable feelings come up often and it can lead to more like checking out and numbing behaviors like uh, using substances or food or even like mindless scrolling on social media or I mean there's all sorts of examples and it's unique to each individual person but you probably know what your own unique numbing behaviors are. So. Um, in the long run, we these behaviors just don't really feel good and they end up sabotaging our well-being. So that's what we're going to talk about today is three steps to help you navigate those stressful and triggering feelings. So I'm going to dive right in. Again, post questions and comments as we go. I love to hear from you guys. So step one is to create a clear vision. And what I mean by this is to decide in advance how you want to feel. Um, I think it's so often that we're in a reactive mode and we forget that we can set an intention for how we want to feel and how we want to act. And of course, this is best done not in a triggering moment, but like in advance when you're in a calm and a clear state, just thinking that through. So you could journal about this or even post it in the comments here. I would love to hear. Step one is really how do you want to feel? And you know, that might be like calm, relaxed, at ease in myself and around my family or, you know, at ease around food. I know a lot of us have struggled with emotional eating or stress eating, things like that. So step one is how do you want to feel? So I invite you to journal on that and share in the comments. Step two is that when you notice yourself starting to feel out of balance or out of tune with those things that you do want to feel, whether that you feel anxiety coming up or sadness or feeling small in a situation or lonely or upset, um, it can often be because we're living either in the past from something that happened to us, whether it was a trauma or something like that, or living in a future fear. So I invite you to bring yourself back to the present moment. You can do this by grounding yourself into your body. Breath work is great for this. Um, a couple things to try would be box breathing, which um, is like four counts, four counts in, four counts holding, four counts exhale, and then four counts kind of like holding again and then starting over. Or uh, four, seven, eight breathing is another option. Noticing physical sensations is also a great way to ground into the present moment. So any of your physical senses, um, what can you hear right now? What are you feeling? You can like grab onto the seat that you're sitting in, running your hands under cold water or warm water, or putting like a cold washcloth on your face. Any of those things, like if you're kind of having like a, 
a moment of really high intense emotion, those physical things can ground you back into the present moment. You can go outside and go for a walk, feel your footsteps slowly hitting the ground. There are so many ways to do this, um, but those are just a few ideas. So get into the present moment. And then the third step I invite you to do is to perform an inquiry. Um, there's always this this space of pause between like a thought or an impulse and then acting on it. So I invite you to like pause and ask yourself what you're actually needing in this moment before grabbing for a coping mechanism or like spinning out into your emotions. Ground in the present moment, pause, ask yourself what you're actually needing right now and it might be um, connection or love or rest or play. There are so many things that we might not be giving ourselves and I invite you to do your best to give yourself that thing that you're needing in that moment. Something I work on with clients is to create a self-soothing toolbox or like a stress a la carte menu essentially to help them reduce stress in the moment and then to learn emotional coping tools other than food. It's not that like food is a bad tool, but a lot of times that can be someone's only emotional coping tool. So, and I'm talking specifically about that because this is, or this is like a, you know, holistic health and nutrition group, but um, there are a lot of ways that we cope. So this is about expanding your coping toolbox. And some ideas for that might be a warm shower or calling a friend, putting on a favorite movie or your favorite music. Um, what else? A hug putting a heavy blanket or like a weighted blanket over you can be really soothing, rocking in a chair, getting into the sun, and even having affirmations or things that you just repeat to yourself essentially like, I can handle this, I am safe, things like that. You could diffuse essential oils. Um, if you have anything that comes to mind, I'd love to hear what works for you. You can pop it in the comments. Um, whatever you share might be able to help somebody else. So definitely feel free to share what your own personal, emotional, and self-soothing coping tools are. And then the last thing I'll mention is just remember that you can choose a new in each moment. So I invite you to let go of, if you have any all or nothing thinking that's coming up, like if you think, oh, I got off track, now things are over, I'm never gonna hit my goals, I invite you to just reset in that moment and you can always just start over right now. Now is a new moment. Uh, labeling yourself as you know bad or a failure or feeling like you're incapable because you kind of like got off track just leads to more feeling bad, which is not helpful because it just leads to more stress, more numbing, more checking out, um, and it kind of just perpetuates that cycle. So remember that you are doing the best you can, give yourself some slack, and I invite you to use these tools, this process, to get yourself out of situations that are just bringing up a lot of intense emotions or stress for you this season and beyond. So I invite you to implement these tools and um, I'd love to know what your top takeaway is. Again, if you want to put any of your own coping tools in the chat box, I'd love to read that. I'm sure others would as well. And yeah, let me know what your takeaway was. This is just a small fraction of the type of work that I do with clients. And like I said, whole body health is so much more than what we eat. It's mental and emotional health as well. And that includes learning to navigate stressful situations, especially around the holidays when a lot of stuff can come up for us and a lot of self-sabotaging behaviors. And the last thing I will mention is that I have a few more spots left open for my one-to-one -one health coaching right now. So if you have goals for the coming year and you're feeling like, I am ready to go, on, go all in on myself and create resilient health inside and out, so I'm ready for my big adventures, then this may be a good fit for you. I invite you to reach out and we'll have a chat and we'll just explore if my program is a good fit for helping you get to your goals faster. And so I'm enrolling clients until December 15th because it's a three month program. And so after that, hopefully I will be hiking in the spring and I will probably won't be able to see anyone until um, probably sometime in the summer. So if you're curious, now is the time. I invite you to reach out, uh, just send me a private message and we'll have a chat. So thank you guys for watching and have a beautiful day.